Defence and Security Analyst Professor Michael Clark. Michael, good to see you. Um, the fighting has been going on around Bakhmut for some time now. Jens Stoltenberg referring to it as the fact that, you know, it could be a pivotal point in this war if it falls. Why is that? Yes, I mean, this, things are getting critical now. The, uh, the Russians or the Wagner group are into the centre of Bakhmut. They're as far as the river, um, but the Bakhmutka River runs right through the middle of the city. If they try to cross the river and the Ukrainians try to defend it, then the Russians will have a problem. Crossing a river in the middle of a city is never easy. Now, the Ukrainians may or may not try to defend it. More importantly, the Russians are moving in to try to block the access roads. And the one that matters is this, the 504, or the 0504, it's the local number for it, to uh, Kostyanivka. And that road is the only route out which the Ukrainians can take. And that road is already under artillery fire, so it's already a gauntlet they have to run to get in and out. If the Russians can actually break that link, then the Ukrainians will have to withdraw. They can't allow themselves to be surrounded. But the problem for the Russians then, and what you know, Mr uh, Stoltenberg said, this should not be allowed to be a turning point, and it won't be. Politically, they've got to manage the loss of Bakhmut if they lose it. But militarily, it doesn't do the Russians any good at all. Because if they're going to go westwards towards Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, the only two places that really matter in the Donbass, those are the places... You get Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, you get the Donbass. Mm -hmm. If you fail to get those, then you'll never take the Donbass. There aren't many roads in the area. There are only two <laughs> roads. They all fall and the, uh, the, what was the, the MO4, uh, as it was called. I think it's now called the E40 in the local uh, numbers. Uh, so there's only two roads. The, the fields either side of the road are wet and muddy. So armour can only go up the roads, and if they do that, the Ukrainians will pick them off. And then look at the ground in between. First of all, I mean, that ground is rising all the time. It's lots of natural defensive positions. And the uh, Ukrainians will certainly defend that ground. So if the Russians wanted to move westwards from Bakhmut, they will have to fight every inch of the way towards the fortresses that the Ukrainians will make of Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. So if Bakhmut falls militarily, it won't do the Russians a whole lot of good. If they're going to take Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, they'll have to take them from the north and from the south, not from the east. And from what we've seen, the Russians haven't got the capability to do that, not just because of the conditions you were describing and the That's geography. Right. Not only have they not got the capability, but every time they've taken a place, like uh, Severodonetsk in mm. July, they stop. They can't keep going. And so they will, there will be, even if they take back much, I can almost guarantee there'll be an operational pause, as they call it, mm -hmm. while they, they take breath and, and sort themselves out for two or three or maybe four weeks. They're never able to take a position and keep going, keep the enemy off balance. They just can't do it. But symbolically, it would be important. Yeah. It's another place to fall to yeah. Russia. Politically, if they lose it, Kiev has really got to manage the loss of this place. Militarily, they shouldn't worry too much. OK, all right, Michael, thank you. Um, okay. Professor Michael Clark there with the analysis from uh, Ukraine. Uh, we'll talk again later on in the programme.